Sorry, did I wake you? It's early, but I thought... What's happened? Are you all right? Sarge, can I have Bobby Millick? In a minute. No, now. Please, I'm, I'm running out of time. Cheers. Any luck? No fingerprints of any kind. It was definitely him. Well, there's no forensic evidence. That's why I'm so sure. We won't get an extension if we don't make him cough this time. We will. You just leave it to me. So you're not coming in? I'm still not feeling well. well what's wrong? I don't know. I'm tired. We're all tired. Have you seen a doctor? There's no point. Well, you'll need a sick note. Oh, is that right, Tony? Well, thank you very much for telling me that. I just can't face anyone. Not yet. Why not? Because you think I'm an idiot. What are you talking about? For getting too close to that girl. It's my fault Jenny got hurt. That's what you're all saying, isn't it? Isn't it? Same as before. Yep. Ready when you are, Danny. I prefer Mr. Glaze. Just trying to keep this friendly. Oi, don't even bother. Hot out there, is it? Nice sunny day. I'm here to talk about the weather. I'd like to know what I've been missing. Another scorcher, is it? Before we get going, can I just check something? You'll get your chance when the tape's running. Yeah, but I'd like to know how long this might go on. Well, that's up to you, Bobby. As soon as you admit you screwed those flats, and then we can charge you. And bail me? Oh, well, that's got nothing to do with me. you got to charge me by 11.30, yeah? Nope. 11.39, to be precise. Not much time, is it? Well, that's why I want to get on with this. But I think I'd rather wait a while. From my point of view, it makes more sense to spin this out as long as pos, doesn't it? What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say, can I have a solicitor? Please. Don't do this to yourself, Paul. Nobody thinks you've done anything wrong. Not even Dave. Especially not Dave. He said that. <laughs> not in so many words, no, but... I can tell what he's thinking. Yeah, he's thinking that silly bitch Polly nearly killed my wife. You weren't driving the car, were you? You didn't ask that nutter to run Jenny down, did you? What she said to CID? I don't know. Well, you must have heard something. I haven't. I never said anything to her about hating Jenny. I mean, whatever Emma's saying about me, she's making it up. All right, I did tell her too much about myself, but I didn't ask her to do what she did. Hey, hey look, just forget it, yeah? Everyone knows that she's mental, and whatever she says, no one is going to blame you. Come on, come on, answer the phone. Duty briefs on his way, should be here in about. Rick, hi, is that Ricky? Do you know where he is then? Oh, you go and do that, pal. Now, Ricky's gone missing. You really think he can help? He knows where Bobby lives, that's more than we do. You still reckon he gave us a bogus address? Yeah, it's far too clean. But even if we find Bobby's job, who's to say he's got anything there worth looking at? There'll be something there. There'll be some gear he hasn't fenced yet. A list of places he's burgled. Anything to wipe that smile off his face. He's really got to you, hasn't he? Why? What's so special about Bobby Millick? He'll be out. Millick. He's an old friend of Duncan's. Friend? I don't think. He's been trying to put this guy away since... 96. Hi, Ricky. Ricky. Ricky? Small-time fence. Used to work with Bobby till Bobby stitched him up. Yeah. Now Duncan's using Ricky to oh. put Bobby away. OK, can you tell him to ring Mr Lennox as soon as possible? Thank you. Thank you. You really think Ricky wants to help? Yeah, I'm positive. Well, does he know that we've got Bobby in custody? Yeah! Well, I thought he was going to give us some new evidence. So did I! It's not a good time, mate. What is it? Well, nothing, really. I've just been with Paul. Yeah, and? Well, she says she's not coming in this week. She says she's ill, but I'd call it depression. <laughs> Don't you care about what she's going through? I tell you, all I care about is my wife. 
who's up almost every night and still having nightmares. It wasn't Paul's fault. Well, did I say it was? You didn't have to. I don't think he's on the phone for you. Is it Ricky? Didn't say. I bet I'll take his What about his... the duty? Just tell me to wait. Ah, Duncan, could we have a chat about the accident? Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Can it wait? You OK? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just that there's someone on the phone. I'm really sorry, sir. I got. Ah, oh, Jack. Can I have a word? Yeah, sure. What about? Duncan Lennox. Hello? Hello? <sighs> there's nobody there. Maybe he reversed the charges. What did he sound like? A bit like you. Scottish? No, Portuguese. Of course it was Scottish. That's tricky. Why did he hang up? Maybe he ran out of money. Oh, he's got a mobile. Duncan, calm down a bit, will you? Take your jacket off. You look like you're about to melt. No, I'm OK. <gasps> he switched his phone off. Of course he's fit. I mean, he's a big fella. <laughs> Sorry, sir. But he's so muscle. I sometimes wonder if you couldn't do more to keep your team in top condition. What do you mean by that, sir? It means I can think of more than one DC who could lose a few pounds. <laughs> well, I'm not running a modelling agency. Just as well. Well, you know as well as I do, there's nothing I can do about it. If any of the DCs go up for promotion, they'll be checked out. Only if they're over 40. Some of them might not live that long. Oh, no one's that bad. I mean, if I thought any of them weren't up to the job, I'd sort them out. Would you, Jack? Not easy telling somebody they're overweight, you know. Maybe you could lose a few pounds yourself. I can still get into the trousers I wore ten years ago. Run every morning, play squash once a week. What does Duncan Lennox do? He plays squash twice a week, actually. Really? Yeah. Is he any good? He's very good. You shouldn't judge Duncan by appearances. You know, beneath that well upholstered exterior lies the body of a lean and hungry young man. Much like myself. He's fitter than most of the DCs in the station. It'd take you a squash any day of the week. How about tonight? Sorry? Tonight. 25 Silver Dean Way. Do you know where that is, Bobby? Yes. Have you ever been there? No. How about 56 Clendon Road? Hang on a minute, Duncan. You asked me all about these addresses last night. But you declined to call me? That's because I've got nothing to say. Seems to me you've got no evidence to keep me here. Am I right? I mean, what's all this so-called information received? It's just a lot of snouts telling you porkies, isn't it? If you had something better to prove that I've been anywhere near these places, you'd have slapped it on the table by now. You were seen trying to sell two gold watches that were stolen from 25 Silver Dean Way. Seen? By who? Where's the witness statement? They've got nothing. Have you? Duncan. It's a bit hot in your neck, isn't it, Duncan? What, you need some air conditioning? I expect your flat's got air conditioning, isn't it? What? Sorry, shouldn't call it a flat, should I? Luxury penthouse apartment, that's more like it. What do you know about where I live? The last time you nicked me, I followed you home. Why? Why not? You think this is funny? I'm enjoying myself, yeah. We'll make the most of it, Bobby, because you're going down. Not today, Duncan. Time's up. So he's walking. Yeah, he's right. I've got nothing. You look a bit knackered. Oh, well, I would. I've been in since 5.30 and I didn't get home till 2. What well, are you looking after yourself? I mean, are you eating properly? Getting enough exercise? What are you talking about? Well, I was just worried. Well, actually, Brownlow was worried that maybe you were out of condition. What? Is that what he said? Well, those weren't the words he used exactly. I mean, the phrase was... overweight. Well, I think I'll use the phrase the pot calling the kettle black. Yeah. Well, I did point out to him that maybe he could lose a few pounds. What, just a few? He said he was in better shape than you. That's rubbish! Well, I know, but, I mean, the trouble was... He then went on about ways of proving that you were not up to the job. You'll never guess what he came up with. Go on, try me. He wants you to play squash with him tonight. What? You do play squash, don't you? Yeah, but... You got a racket? Somewhere. No problem, then. But I'm going out with Shona. Go on, Duncan. Play him. I'd love you to stuff Brownlow. 
<laughs> How's Duncan gonna win? Duncan can't even bend down to tie his own shoelaces up, let alone run around for an hour. He's light on his feet. <laughs> there ain't nothing light about the geezer. I mean, don't get me wrong, I respect him and all that. But he ain't exactly a natural athlete, is he? He's quick enough when the chips are down, trust me. <laughs> yeah? Well, if you're that confident, let's make it more interesting, shall we? I've got... One, two, three, four... Fifty quid, says Brownlow wins. Got fifty quid? Yeah, I've got fifty. But I only want about five. <laughs> right, I'm going to three to one on a Brownlow victory. What about Duncan? Tens. Oh, come on, he's got no chance. What is he, fourteen, fifteen stone? Well, there's quite a few podgy coppers round here, you know. Hope you're not looking at me. A bit hard not to, Tony. You're filling up half the room. Yeah, I'm surprised you and Jim can even squeeze in here, mate. Oi! Shut it. So what are you going to do? Sit on me? Well, you both have to admit you're not exactly at the peak of physical fitness, are you? We can still do the job as well as you. Well, you can when you're driving. I can still run. Not as fast as me, you can't. Yeah, well, no one can go that quick, can they? Not with all this clobber on. What is this? When was the last time you actually caught somebody on foot, Tone? Yesterday. Got that bloke who crashed a minibus. Oh, come on, he was drunk. He was 65. He had a broken ankle. I'll tell you what. Come in here, I'll show you how fast we are. This has gone on long enough. I think I'll pop in and see her. Sorry. Do you know what's up with Paul? I saw her this morning, Sergeant. And? Oh, she didn't look too good. Could you be more precise? Well, she looked a bit peaky, fluey, under the weather. Right. Nothing to do with this crazy woman who tried to kill Jenny Quinn, eh? Yeah, well, obviously Paul's upset about that. From what I hear, she's every right. It wasn't her fault. That's not what people seem to think. Including you. Yeah, I can't read my handwriting, Dave. Did you say 25 or 35 pounds on DC Lennox? Over. 25, over. That's all received, thank you very much. All right, that's enough. Governors might be listening. Well, it doesn't bother me. Mr Conway's just bet a pony on Mr Brownlow to lose. Probably spiking his tears as we speak. You work from Cass lately? I'm not a peep. Where is she? Kenley Magistrate's Court. Government Minister's visiting. It's supposed to be some sort of demonstration or something. There's nothing on CAD. Well, give her a shout, will you? Make sure she's OK. 518 from Sierra Oscar receiving. Got the right duty on a day like this. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not out and about, boss. 518 receiving. Go ahead. Message from Sergeant Boyden. Are you OK? Over. Well, I'm sweating like a pig and I've got sunstroke. Otherwise, I'm doing just fine. Over. He's asking about a demonstration now. Do you require any assistance? Over. No, I think I can manage. The demo hasn't really kicked off yet. The minister's car's just arrived, and I'll give you a shout if it does. Over. All received. This way, minister. You all right, mate? Can we just cut up there? I want to go into my place. What for? Better get my kit for this stupid squash match. Feeling confident? I could beat Brownlow with one hand tied behind my back, no problem. Of course you could, of course you could. Who did you bet on? Who do you think? You're a man, Duncan, you're a man! <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, very good. Good job you're a detective. Sierra One from Sierra Oscar receiving. Go ahead. 56, Clendon Road, burglary now. Can you deal? You telling your video still here, mate? I don't care about them. And what you lost? My photo album. You keep that in your wardrobe? I've taken some clothes as well. He's in the loo now, some sort of tummy upset. He's got to drive us to the probation office in Pearl Street. Well, he won't be driving anywhere for a while. You have to. We're on a very tight schedule. The minister took a longer lunch than expected. Did you say Steve's not well? You drive it, he can't stop throwing up. Does he want some help? I don't know. I'll go and check. Where's the gents? Uh, just down here to the right. I won't be a minute. Have you called the DSE? Yeah, someone's on their way. Can you give your missus a call? No. This is all we need. 
Sharon is okay, though, isn't she? What do you mean? Well, just is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. I tell you, this is a fantastic view you got here, mate. You are one lucky man. How much Sharon pay for this place? Why do you assume it belongs to her? Because <laughs> I know you couldn't get a mortgage this big, not on the salary that we earn. What's it worth? Do I ask you about your financial affairs? No, I don't. So don't poke your nose into mine, OK? <coughs> Hello? Tony. What's up? Two hours is no good. We need a new driver now. We'll find one. Can you drive? Yeah. Good. You may have to take us to Pole Street. <sighs> Hang on a minute, miss. I'm a police officer, not a chauffeur. You're a public servant, like myself. Yeah, but I'm here to make sure your minister's not bothered by demonstrators. And the best way you can do that is by taking him from this building to Pole Street in his car. Well, I doubt I'm insured for his car. Who cares about that? <laughs> I do. Are you refusing to help a parliamentary undersecretary of state at the Home Office? No, I'm refusing to help you. Is that your jacket? Where did you get that from? 56 Clendon Road. Someone broke in there and left that in the middle of the room. <laughs> Why do you think it's mine? This was in the breast pocket. It's you and Shona, isn't it? It's from the album. What album? Whoever burgled here stole some of my clothes and he stole a photo album. There were some personal pictures in the album. Oh, yeah? It was Bobby. You what? The guy who broke in here, his name was Bobby Millick. There's no use looking for fingerprints. He's too good for that. How can you be sure it's him? He knows where I live and he knows I'm out to get him. Looks like he got me first, eh? Why would he do that? Because <sighs> he thinks all this is a game. In my last nick, I spent six months chasing him, and then he disappeared for about a year. Now he's turned up in Sun Hill. He's been here since Christmas. He thinks this is all a joke or something. Sierra Oscar from 340 receiving. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Did you find DC Lennox? Yeah, I'm with him now. Can you tell him I'm reporting a burglary at 17 Mulpit Road? There's a pair of trousers nailed to the front door. Plus, there's an envelope with his name on it. Does he want me to open it? No, don't. Tell Dave I'm on my way. Hang on, Duncan. Slow down, mate. Want to stay fresh for the big match tonight? Stuff the match. There's a lot of money riding on you. If you lose, there's going to be some very unhappy people about, including me. Well, I can't help that. I've got to get this envelope. Why? What's in it? <laughs> what's in it? Tony, you're a man of the world, right? I have my moments. Have you in the... You... Have you and your girlfriend never experimented? Well, between girlfriends at the moment. <laughs> yeah, but... Have you ever? You lost me, mate. <laughs> Just forget it. Oh, where's the car? Where's Mickey? Don't know. How am I going to get in my pit road now? No problem. I'll give you a lift. The Minister's private secretary insists you check with Mr Brownlow over. Sorry, Cash. Just run that past me again, will you? The Minister's driver's too ill to drive. The Minister's had some wine with his lunch and the private secretary hasn't got a licence. Now, she wants me to act as chauffeur until the government car service can send a relief driver. Now, will you check with Mr Brown, though, whether or not I have to do with this woman's asking me? Over. That's all received. I'll call you back. Out. He's going to say no. The Minister's meeting divisional commanders at the end of the day at... Barton Street. If you won't take us, how are we supposed to get there? Number 47 goes all the way. Pull over. What for? Malpit Road. What number did Dave say it was? 17. 17 Mile Pit Road. That's one of the houses that Bobby Millick's burgled. And 56 Clendon Road. He's going back to the houses he screwed and he's screwing them again. Well, why would he want to do that? I've no idea. I don't know how his mind works. So what do you want to do? Um, go back to the next, see if I can work out what his next move is. What about this envelope? Can you ask Dave to look after it? But tell him if he dares open it, it'll break every bone in his body. 518 from Sierra Oscar receiving. Go ahead, Nick. 
A message from Mr Brownlow. You are not, I repeat, not to drive the minister's car. When the minister leaves the court, you are to return to Sierra Oscar. Over. All received. Sorry, but you heard. Martha Young. Yes, he is. One second, please. It's number 10. Downing Street. No, Mornington Crescent. Hello? Does he? OK. Tony wants a word. With you? I take it when he says Tony, it means the Prime Minister. <laughs> You're very astute, aren't you? I try my best. Not when it comes to helping us with transport. What's going on? from 518 receiving. What's going on out there? I think the WI have arrived. Go ahead, Cass. Yeah, can the magistrate's court urgent assistance required? There's about 30 protesters and they don't look too peaceful over. Received. Any unit assist 518? Sierra 1. Sierra 1 received. Sierra Oscar 2. Don't worry, sir. We'll soon have you out Sierra of here. Oscar I wouldn't bother. I'm not worth it. Sorry. The reshuffle started. I've just been sacked. When we get there, you stay in the car. We don't want you getting hurt, do we? wasn't it? Telling you over the phone. Couldn't you have waited till you got back to your office? Apparently not. Did you do something wrong? Did you give a reason? Making room for new faces. Younger faces, he meant. Female, black, gay. Anything but an old scouser like me. You sound a bit cynical. I wouldn't have got this far if it wasn't. Well, you're still an MP, though. What good's that? I can't do anything. My Auntie Mary said you got us a new zebra crossing at the end of our street, just off St James's Road. She thinks I had something to do with a zebra crossing. All I would have done was to get my secretary to copy letters and petitions and send them to the council. Right then, that's all sorted. Lord Tyler's taking over the rest of today's meetings. Your successor won't be in place till this evening. Do you know who it is? Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Hamblin. You'll have to wait for the official announcement. We'll send your personal effects over to the Commons. Um, could I have your Home Office pass? Oh. Yes. Of course. Right. I'll be off then. Got your bus fare, have you? I've ordered a taxi. Thank you for all your help, PC Rickman. I'll mention your name to Chief Superintendent Mannion, shall I? Yeah, whatever. Oh, stupid cow. But you've got to be rid of her, aren't you? What happened to Duncan? Oh, he's walking back to the net. What this heat? Yeah, well, I told him he'd be tucked away here for a bit. You what? 
Are you trying to wear him out? What, me? Want a lift? Yeah, great. Oi! You have to be quicker than that tonight! Sorry, Jim, repeat your last. I said, can you put me down for another 20 quid on Mr Brownlow to win? Over. Uh, no, Jim, you're, you're breaking up, mate. I can't hear you. Call me back on a landline. Out. Oh, that's better. Do you want something? Oh. Apart from a blast of cold air up the trouser leg. Is that? All units from Sierra Oscar. Can anyone give Mr Munro a lift to Polly Page's flat, please? He'd like to see how she's doing. Over. Sierra 1, tell him we'll be there in 10, over. Received. What did you do that for? I'm really happy here. I want to check that Polly's in before we drop the gaffer off. Where else is she going to be? I don't know, but she hasn't been answering her phone. Well, maybe she's asleep, Tom. Well, let's hope so. She won't look too good if she's out and about. Oh, by the way, put me down for £20 on Mr Brownlow. Two of these. You could have a hamburger. Yeah, no problem. Do you want chips for that? No, I shouldn't really. I haven't eaten today. Yeah, give me hamburger and chips. No problem, I'll bring it over. Cheers, mate. Has that hit the spot? Where the hell did you come from? I was just passing. Thought we might have a drink together. Mate, You're a thief. I'll pay for it. You broke into my flat. You can't prove it. You can't prove anything. I will. And you're top of my list. Victimisation, Duncan. Some people don't like being victimised. Well, get used to it, cos I'm going to send you to prison, boy. You better be quick. 24 hours from now and I'll be sunning myself on a beach. Just a short break. But I won't be coming back to Sun Hill. Time to move on. Just like that. I saw a film about this armed robber. He said something I'll always remember. Do not have any attachments. Do not have anything in your life that you're not willing to walk out on in 30 seconds flat if you feel the heat round the corner. Good advice. Yeah. But wherever you go, I'll find you. I got under your skin. You know what I'm talking about? I just want them back. What's that? My photographs. I wish I could help you. Perhaps I'll see you later. You will. Excuse me, what is everyone doing in here? Just trying to keep cool. It's boiling outside. Well, I don't care. If you're not on proper inquiries, I don't want you in this room. You can clear off and all. Has anyone reported a burglary in the last half hour? I don't think so. Why? I'm looking for a guy called Bobby Millick. He's done about six houses and I think he's going to do them again in the same order. So where's the next one going to be, then? Should be a house in Stanbeck Avenue. Hey, Jim. I think you owe me a favour. Drive. Hilton Lane, a male IC1 armed with a handgun. Any unit free to take a look, over. 340, I'm not far away. No, don't worry, Dave. There's an ARV assigned. Leave it to them, all right? Received. I'll give you a shout when I'm done. Right, sir. Do you reckon she's in? Not at the moment, no. Oh, she doesn't look very ill, does she? That's what the governor's going to say.
Polly! Feeling better? Stop the car. Why, what's wrong? I'm a fool. Yeah, and? He's watching me, Bobby Millick. He's probably following us right now. There is no one behind us. Don't worry, he'll be round here. What are you talking about? Well, if he's not watching me now, he'll be waiting in Stanbeck Avenue. Duncan, where are you going? I'll slip round the back. With any luck, he won't be there. You need some backup? I can handle Bobby Millick. Have you got a PR? Yeah, it's OK, I've got a phone. If he wants to walk, let him walk. You, of all people. I'm not skiving. That's not how it looks to me. Well, you must have had days like this. Yeah, one or two. Not five in a row. I just need some time to myself, sir. I do realise you've been through a traumatic experience. Uh, there are plenty of people you can talk to. Counsellors. Strangers. Trained professionals. I'm not interested. It's not just you suffering. Think about the rest of the team. No, sir. Just for once, I'm going to think about me. It's a replica. It looked real to me. Why didn't you call for assistance? There wasn't time. And you sure he got into the betting shop through the back door? Yeah, the door was open. He must have had an accomplice or Sierra something. Sierra Oscar 1 from Sierra 1. Receiving. Go ahead, Sam. No trace so far, sir. Do you want us to keep looking? I'm not sure it's worth it. 682, any luck? Negative, sir. It could be anywhere by now. The first call came from an anonymous male, number withheld. He just said that there was a bloke running around with a gun in Hilton Lane. MP dispatched an ARV two minutes later. So who made the second call? Again, it was an anonymous male. This time he said something about an armed robbery at a betting shop on Luxford Road. This call came just after the ARV arrived on the scene in Hilton Lane. Which is just round the corner from the betting shop. So someone was watching. And when the ARV turned up, they made the second call and I went straight into the trap. You think it was Bobby Miller who called? Too right. Mm, maybe not both times. What makes you say that? The second call came from a mobile phone. The number wasn't withheld, see? Yeah. You know who it is? <laughs> yeah, it's a wee creep called Ricky. I thought he was on my side. Where are you going? I'm going to sort this out once and for all. Ah, oh, Duncan. You all set for the night? Yes, sir. You know my squash club is? Uh, yeah, but I think I'm going to be a wee bit late. Oh, no. You're not there by 7.30. You lose by default. Sir, hmm? do you know Chief Inspector Frangley's here? Is he? He's come with some Home Office minister. Lord Tyler? I thought they were meeting at Barton Street. Apparently not. Mr Mannion's on his way. And Mr Conway's looking after the visitors till he gets here. I said you're welcome to join them. Very big of him. Those keys. No, I've got to take his motor down to get washed Just up. Just give me the bloody keys. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Stay in bed all day, pretend I'm dying. That's better than going out shopping. I just wanted to cheer myself up. And did you? No. 
Paul, you've got to sort yourself out. If you're not careful, well, I don't know what could happen. Are you listening to me? And this is Sunhill's nerve centre, the CAD room. Stands for Computer Aided Dispatch. Derek? What's going on? Our uh, slight change of plan. So Lord Tyler wanted to see around a couple of stations before meeting the divisional commanders. Uh, Minister, can I introduce you to Chief Superintendent Brown? How many times do I have to tell you people out? Stop. Or if you'd rather stay, then please feel free to make yourselves at home. What's your problem, pal? You've been avoiding me, Ricky. Oh, God. I appreciate you, Rickman. I'm so glad I found you. I thought you'd be back in Westminster by now. Oh, I can't face it. All those hacks looking for a quote. My so-called friends rubbing their hands with glee. I decided to drown my sorrows in Sun Hill. Really? And then I remembered my diary. I left it in the box. The red box. My private secretary, my ex-private secretary, took it away. What's that got to do with me? It's a bit sensitive. You see, I've been keeping this diary ever since Tony made me a minister. Some of the entries have been a little... candid, especially with reference to some of my colleagues. You mean you've been slagging them off? Some more than others. Tony, Peter and... Alistair. Especially Alistair. I still do. I've got to get the diary out of the box. If anyone at the Home Office reads it, that's my career finished for good. I thought it already was. Not if Gordon Brown takes over from Tony. And he will, one day. So you didn't have a go with Gordon, then? Of course not. Now, I know you can walk into any police station you like. So how about taking me with you into Barton Street? If we can find that box, I can get some sleep tonight. No. There's no need to go to Barton Street. Can I help you, sir? Hi, DC Lennox from Sunhill. Can you tell me who's in room 316, please? I could wait out here. I really don't think it matters. Hold on. No, they're not here. They must have gone downstairs. Yeah, it is. What are you doing? This won't take a second. Oh, I don't think you should be doing this. Mr Hamblin! You pop round and see her. Why would I want to do that? Just tell her everything's OK. But it's not like Tony. That's the point. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. I am really not happy about this. Look, if anyone asks, you did nothing. It'll be our little secret. Come <laughs> on! 
Right. You're next. What was all this about? Nicking my clothes? And the betting shop? I wanted to see how good you were. <laughs> and how good was it? Not bad. Not bad at all. Right. Now, where are my photographs? We'll have to bag up the money and the jewellery. Do you know what the time is? Don't worry. I can book him in and get his squash squats for half seven. What's in the bag? <sighs> Nothing. Photographs of his wife. Shut ah! your mouth! Duncan. You look rough, you're right. It's a long story, sir. Am I too late? No. Just uh, hurry up and get changed. It's the uh, first door on the right. We better warm up first. Yeah, okay. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Oof! Duncan? Well, um, I'll go and fetch his things. Are you taking them to St. Hughes? Yes. I'll see you there. Lucy Whitman. Who's asking? Dear Hannah. Lucy McCauley, special branch. Fancy a drink? Cheers. Yo. How you doing? I'm not so good. What happened? You lost. I'm pleased to say. <laughs> my bag. My bag. What happened to my bag? Don't worry about it. Mr. Brownlow found it and took it home. Oh, dear. Oh, he didn't look inside, did he? I don't know, mate. Of course he did. Most fighters have just got some car standing in the background. What the hell was he doing here, you filthy? <laughs> Dealing with stress. You wouldn't go to a counsellor, would you? Depends how many wild horses you could find. What do you think I should do? Have another drink. Try and forget what happened. Easy for you to say. Well, hanging around here isn't going to help, is it? You think I should go back to work? Yeah, I do. It's not the same without you. Miss you, Paul. Really? Yeah. Mind you, after three of these, I'm beginning to miss Reg Ollis. <laughs> so what you say? Back on duty tomorrow? Maybe. Yeah. Good girl. How do you feel? 
think Dave coped with all his stress? What, after the stabbing? He seemed a bit different when he came out of hospital, didn't he? Never been able to work Dave out, to be honest. On the surface, he seems like a normal bloke, but... All that business about nicking Jenny off George and getting married so quickly. Yeah, it was quick, wasn't it? Wouldn't be surprised if he had kids before long. Either that or he'd get divorced. Which would be sad. Wouldn't it? This is the one, madam. OK, thanks. Come in. Mr Hamblin. Cass, how lovely to see you again. You know, when the messenger said a constituent was here, I Just shut up, Mr Hamblin. I want an explanation and an apology. What for? You know bloody well what for. Two special branch officers came to see me today. Some cabinet papers are missing from your red box. Some highly sensitive cabinet papers. Now, at special branch, you're trying to work out where they were mislaid. And they asked me if I saw anyone suspicious at Canley Court. I thought I'd seen him. I just looked a bit dodgy. This is serious. Oh, just relax, will you? There's no harm done. Yeah, well, somebody could have seen us in Mr Conway's office. You said no one saw us. Well, I don't think they did, but I can't be sure. Fingers crossed, eh? I'm not going to get an apology, am I? But what about an explanation, then? I've just lost my ministerial salary. There's a few papers that'll pay a fair whack for the documents I've got. Plus, Tony won't like it. Call me petty. I don't want to get my own back. And what if I tell Special Branch? And lose your own job. You lied to me! I'm an MP. What do you expect? Hello, Dave. Did I wake you? Yes. Sorry. What do you want? Can I come in? Jenny's asleep. I'll talk quietly. Go on, then. I've been worried about you. What? Well, have you ever stopped to think about what you've done? What are you talking about? Getting married. Why did you do it? You know why I did it. Yeah, but it was all too quick, wasn't it? You didn't give yourself a chance to figure out what you really wanted. I was talking about you to Sergeant Boyd. Uh, Polly, don't you think you've done enough damage talking about me? Go away. Dave, I'm just trying to deal with what happened. So is Jenny. She's the one that got run over. I'm sorry. Leave us alone, Paul. But Dave! Can't we just talk about you and me? There's nothing more to say. Clark, our new probation. <laughs> Hi, Kaiser. I've got a locker or something. Ta da! <laughs> the next ten weeks is a chance for you to bridge the gap between doing exercises at Hendon and doing the real thing here. Well, find us somebody good, will you, June? Because we need a key speaker. But the last thing I need right now is getting roped into yet to a bunch of slimy old car crawlers. What would I have to do then to get onto the area car driver's course? You've got to help us out here. He's doing our brains in. Yeah. 